Welcome to Rules of Engagement. Uh, today's going to be developing fundamentals, but before we get into what we're going to be doing today, why don't we give a little breakdown of the show. This is a, a tactical analysis and kind of just general talking about StarCraft II show I put on with MLG. I'm, of course, I'm your host, Nick Axav Randish. We, we air the show Monday through Thursday, every day at 5 p.m. Eastern, and each day has a unique theme. So every Monday we have Talking Tactics, that's where we take a look at professional level games, the tactics they use. Uh, we had this show on yesterday, we talked about some of the, the indirect approach, controlling concaves, map control, a lot of really cool concepts that you can apply to your, uh, to your games, regardless of what skill you're in. Uh, Tuesdays today we had developing fundamentals, but I actually have a little bit of a special unique episode on today we'll, we'll get to pretty soon. And I think it's a great one to show to your friends, to teach them about uh, basically why you love StarCraft, why you love watching the pros and playing it yourself. It's a great introductory episode. Wednesday we have Mechanics of the Bazaar. That's where we again look at professional level play. And uh, we take a look at when they do a little bit oddball strategies and analyze why do they choose that strategy there? Why does it work sometimes? But also maybe why is it not used as, as a common play strategy? Thursday, we do community critique. That's where you guys at home send me your replays. Go to majorleaguegaming.com slash replays. There's about a 15, 20 second uh, form to fill out there. And once you're done with that, uh, you send it to me and on Thursday. I go over your games and talk about you know what went wrong and maybe how to do things better. And also what went right. And some ideas you're doing that are very, very high level ideas. So without further ado, Let's get on to today's episode of Developing Fundamentals. Uh, so for, for today, we're going to first basically talk about what is StarCraft II and what is competitive StarCraft II and why it's such a cool game. Then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the introductory to the Terran race, then the Protoss race, and then the Zerg race. So what is StarCraft II, right? That's a great, great question. Everyone, of course, wants to ask that. So StarCraft II is a real-time strategy game. There's a lot of ways to define real-time strategy games. Uh, the one you see in front of your screen right now is, is basically the definition I, I enjoy using. Uh, so it's, it's a real-time strategy game as defined there, uh, but one of the key differences is that it's done really, really, really well. So uh, it's really thoughtfully made, and there's a couple unique features of it, which I'm going to talk about real quick. So one of them is it's designed to force complex strategic decisions. Uh, and, and this is done by having a lot of unique races, right? So it's got unique races uh, involved in it, and it also has... Uh, very, very balanced units amongst those races. So when you have three different races that are all asymmetrical and they all have a ton of units that are all viable options, what you get there is a ton of different complex tactical choices, right? Uh, because you're, you're going to have your own set of units and they're, 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 it's going to be a good strategy. Your opponent's going to have a totally different set of units, but each of you is, has different strengths. So there, there's an there's a, a, asymmetry of basically different forces of power. You might have faster units, stronger units, your units may be better in certain positions, their units may be better in other positions, one of you might have a stronger economy, etc. So all this asymmetry makes the tactical options so complex where you each try to play to each other's strengths, your opponent tries to play against your weaknesses to maximize their strengths, and it makes it just a very, very exciting and fun game to watch. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is I just mentioned the three different races and how they're kind of asymmetrical. So what are these three races, right? So first we're going to have Terran, and then we're going to have Protoss, and then we're going to have Zerg. And we're going to get a little more into detail of these actual races uh, a little bit later into the show. But to start out, the basic idea of Terran is they're the humans, right? They're they're basically the space marines. It's, it's hu humankind gone into the future. And the advantage of the Terrans have is they have very, very versatile units, right? I mean, they, they have guns, they can shoot in any direction, uh, but, but their disadvantage is maybe they're a little bit weaker, right? We're kind of soft, soft, fleshy creatures, not the strongest of all beings in, in the StarCraft universe. But we do have technology, we're pretty versatile, and there's some cool things you can do with Terran, all right? Then, of course, we have uh, Protoss. Uh, Protoss is like the high-tech alien race, you know, if you've seen Red or seen the movie War of the Worlds, they're kind of the guys on the giant walkers that come across and, and intend to conquer mankind. Uh, and they're, they're kind of cool. You're like the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Predator. They're basically like the Predators in that. Uh, and then we come to last race is going to be the Zerg. Uh, so the Zerg has some pretty cool uh, options as well where they can, um, they're basically really fast. They're like little insects and bugs and they kind of uh, spread across the world and, and utilize their speed to take over the world. They're very, very, very fast and they're very, very cheap to make. You can make plenty, plenty of the Zergs. Uh, so as you're using these races, uh, the next thing we talk about is basically the skill sets in which you need, in which you have to do as you compete in this. So, uh, the skill sets are one: you have to build up your economy, you have to be able to manage, you know, your base, all the resources, uh, and, and that can be very, very hard in itself. And you guys who played SimCity knows there uh, can be tricky just to handle an entire economy. But then you also have to decide 
what to do with your units to attack your opponent. You have to know the tactical options, right? Uh, so should you attack them over here? Should you uh, section off some units to go harass their economy? Which is one of the coolest parts about StarCraft, is, is uh, I mentioned about the zero-sum dynamics. You can not only focus on growing your own army up, but you also want to attack your opponent's army, and then not only attack their army, but attack their ability to produce more army. You can go on base raids, you can attack their economy. So all these tactical options, you have to choose on how to execute them. That's another skill set involved in playing the game. And of course, the final skill set is going to be once you have your, once you have your army allotted, uh, allotted to you from your production means, then you decide tactically where to send that on the map. Then, of course, you, there's all sorts of little control issues. Like during that battle, how do you control each individual unit to maximize its use? So there's a lot of different skill sets in the game, which is I find really, really enjoyable as opposed to some other strategy games because you can have something you're really good at and then play the game to basically tune it towards that skill set, uh, as opposed to just there being a single skill set where it's okay. Whoever has the best of this X factor is going to win the game. There's no kind of battle of, of styles and wits and, and, and things like that. So uh, I think that's a really cool uh, part about StarCraft. So the last thing we're going to talk about is, um, is, is, is basically the fact that the races each have their own unique kind of lore, as, as I went over, but... I mean, basically, you, you have a style, you want to be an aggressive player, you want to do a lot of harassments, you want to build up your economy. You're, you can do that with all three races. So when you're getting into the game, you want to decide what type of race do I want to play, how do I want to approach the game. The key thing isn't to try to say what race is best. The thing is, what race do I enjoy the most? What would feel the race is, is most fun to me? For example, I play mainly the Protoss race, and it's because I think the units are very cool. I mean, I mentioned the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Predator before. I thought the Predator was a pretty cool character, and he looks a lot like some of the Protoss guys, so I kind of stick with them. Uh, but, but for you guys at home, you know, whatever race uh, feels the best to you. If you like kind of insects and bug creatures crawling over the world, and you pick the Zerg. If you're kind of just like the, you like people, but with people with high technology, you would pick the Terran, of course, if you like those weird kind of uh, aliens that are way from the future. Then, of course, you want to pick the Protoss. So uh, it's all about wh which race you, you feel is, is kind of the, the most fun for you. And we're going to talk about the races in the next segments. But before we get into that, why don't we just play a quick highlight reel so you can see how cool competitive StarCraft 2 can be. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a minute. It's being commentated by my good friend Axel Toss. It's from the top, top plays from uh, some of the non-Korean players at our most recent MLG tournament in Dallas. What's up, guys? Axel Toss back here with another top five plays, this time from the Foreigners from the 2012 MLG Fall Championships. Coming in at number five, we have Scarlet with a perfect engagement against Bomber on Cloud Kingdom. Infestors trying to sneak their way around to be able to just have some vision of this attack. It looks like Scarlet is going for it, darting in the tanks at the back. Just then, unseized Scarlet moving in, Banelings and Zerglings ripping apart everything. An astounding bust to this push. Nothing can manage to stand in the way of all these units right before 2-2 is finished for the Terran. Number four, we have Major going up against Life, displaying some immaculate Hellion control. Beautiful defense here by Life so far. Hasn't taken any real damage. Links are going to come streaming out. Can he surround those Hellions? I think. Wow, I think not. He, Major he did lose his Banshee. Oh, maybe he can, actually. The Links do come in and. Well, oh, Major manages to get out of that. That was a really nice play, actually, from Major to hold on to that. He takes down a Queen as well and might end up losing the Hellions, but no, the control remains impeccable here from Major. We're coming in at number three, we have Scarlet once again taking Bomber completely off guard. He's got to find an answer without the Brooder. And there it looks like a lot of Banelings being morphed and somewhat of a counterintuitive unit to build, but the Thors do tend to clump up. Here's an engagement. Oh, a terrible angle for Bomber. All the tanks at the front. Oh, Bomber engaging at an atrocious angle. And now all of a sudden, a queen infested Terran Roach Zergling army is stepping into the fray. So much energy. Where did that energy come from? Tanks desperately trying to target fire down queens. But that is the big break that Scarlet needed. And number two, it's Flash versus Naniwa in a deciding game three, with Naniwa going for an immortal bus. He's got to wait and send the Zealous up, Mr. Bader. It's going to be right here. Here we go. Naniwa inching forward. He is going to commit to it. Flash has no medevac. He does have Sniff, but that's a fantastic force field. And Flash is cornered, and there is no chance. Naniwa has done it. 40 supply to 60. Flash has no Number 
we have Nanuel once more against Flash, showing off his brilliant micro ability. The only thing missing is a proxy pylon. And Nanuel's gonna have to defend in his main base. Tuzel's getting there with charge immediately. They're gonna have to oh. feed back an Archon to defend. The double feedback, but Flash still posing an imminent threat there. The Zealots doing massive damage as they do have that plus two defense. So many storms. Oh no, the storm at the front. No! Oh, Flash loses so much there to these plus two armored zealots. Can Flash hold on? Naniwa fighting back with a terrible, terrible counter attack. And Flash this time may not be able to hold his building buckets in the main base. And this is a fantastic attack. The SCVs. Oh, oh my God! Guys, this has been Axel Tosh with your top five plays. If you want your plays included in this top five, head on over to www.majorleaguegaming.com slash submit. I hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as I did. It's a really cool demonstration of how fun the game can be when it's played by top professionals in the world. Uh, pretty soon we're going to actually see, we're going to look at the different races and how they build up and how you can basically uh, learn to get to uh, the cool scenes that the, the, the professionals play at. Uh, but we're just going to go over to feel the races. But before we get to that, we take a quick break and we'll be on to talking about the Terran race.